Hey everyone, Lloyd here, and I'm excited to share with you today's devotional thought. Our theme this week, of course, is This Week Matters, and in so many ways, God is speaking to us this week. In this time of, of fear and uncertainty, uh, we long for hope, we seek it out. And if, and if only there was someone to cling to, someone to bridge the gap, uh, between us and God and someone to bring order out of the chaos that we're, we're currently experiencing. Of course, we as Christians know that we, we have that person in our life in the person of Jesus Christ. And uh, this week matters because this week is when it all happened 2,000 years ago when, uh, when Jesus not only came to the earth and died for our sins, but also was resurrected. Today's, uh, today's devotional is going to come from John chapter 13, and it really starts in, uh, in verse 18. So that's John 13, 18 through to the end of the chapter. And uh, there are two main, <clears throat> excuse me, two main topics in, in this section. One is Jesus predicting his betrayal, and the other is Jesus predicting Peter's denial. Now, it's important to remember that this context is just before the Passover feast and um, the evening meal was being served. And according to earlier on in this chapter, the devil had already had already prompted Judas Iscariot to, to betray Jesus. And Jesus knew that the father had put all things under his power. So there was certainly that tension there. And Jesus knew this was going to happen. And so he says in verse 18, I'm not referring to all of you. I know those I've chosen, but to fulfill the scripture, he who shares my bread, in other words, who's going to share the bread coming up in this, in this time period right now, has lifted up his heel against me. And that's from Psalm 41, as a, a, and it's taken as a prophecy, right? That, uh, that it's, it's a way to prove that Jesus is going to be betrayed by one of his own, by one of his disciple, disciples. And then after this, he says Jesus, it says Jesus was troubled in spirit, and he testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. And of course, they all stared at each other. They're all hanging out. It would be just if, just like if somebody uh, in, in a, at a party or at a family gathering, uh, if they were uh, all sitting around talking, and then all of a sudden somebody dropped a bombshell. Uh, and a total surprise, uh, whether it was good news or bad news, it would feel like that in the room. And uh, they all stared at each other. They were at a loss to know what he meant. And uh, one of them, uh, the disciple whom Jesus loved, which is John, uh, was reclining next to him. And Simon Peter mentioned to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. And so he asks him and he says, well, it's the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I've dipped it in the dish. So he dips, the, he dips it in the dish and he gives it to Judas. And, and we kind of know the rest of the story there because as soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. Now there's no doubt that Judas was a willing participant. We also know that God had predicted and, and preordained this in a way, this whole situation, this whole scenario. Jesus tells him to go and do this quickly, what he has to do. Um, because it, it is done to be to, to fulfill prophecy and to fulfill the goal of Jesus and his ministry and why he is here on earth. The big thing about this passage is, is, that, is that we can trust God. There are so many times in our lives that, um, that we, we doubt, and doubting isn't necessarily an abnormal thing, and, and doubting isn't necessarily a bad thing, Doubt says more about us than God's faithfulness because we know that God is always faithful to do the right thing even though it may not be the thing that we want. And so when you see something like this in scripture, when you see this amazing story that there was this person that Jesus let into his inner circle, that he let him carry the money and he was one of the 12, it seems on the surface like an absurdity except that was the necessary thing that needed to happen. And uh, for us as believers, especially during this time, um, we can contrast this with our own willingness to do what God wants us to do. Uh, Judas had a willingness to get whatever he wanted out of the situation. Um, Peter was totally different. Uh, Peter was very imperfect. Peter had flaws that, uh, that maybe 
um, might set him apart, maybe might set him in a category that, that wouldn't make him pastoral material these days, I'm not sure, but um, Jesus saw something in Peter that allowed him to become the rock that the church was built on. And so in that passage, after Judas was gone, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified with him. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You'll look for me, and just as I told the Jews, I'm going to tell you now where I'm going, you cannot come. And he gives us this wonderful command. He says, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And we know that song. We understand that we are to love each other. And that shows that there is the Holy Spirit working within us. And Jesus has a relationship with us and we with him. And then there's this wonderful little section at the end of this chapter where Simon Peter asks him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replies, where I'm going, you can't follow but you will follow later. And Peter said, as he's always ready, he's always always at the ready, right, to do this thing that Jesus wants him to do or what he thinks Jesus wants him to do. He says, Lord, why can't I follow you? I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus says, well, basically back up, right? It might seem like that right now. It might seem you're all in. But he says, will you really lay down your life for me? I tell you the truth before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And we know that after Jesus is arrested, that's exactly what happens. Now, in my sermon a couple weeks ago, I talked about Peter, and I talked about how Peter was this imperfect person who God used immensely to write some of the New Testament, to travel and preach and teach and show people the truth about Jesus Christ. In fact, the message that I talked about came out of Galatians, where at that point, Peter had been doing that for 20 years. He still fell into this temptation of the Judaizers, uh, people who were trying to add on to the gospel, uh, add on to the law, and add on to what it meant to become a Christian. And for the sake of brevity, I'll just say that Peter fell into this group not realizing what he was doing. It was kind of what Peter did in a lot of ways, and yet he was still used by God to do the things that God needed him or wanted him to do so that people could know who Jesus is. So my encouragement to you today, as we talk about this week mattering, that this week is very important, that you have an opportunity. It doesn't matter where you're at in your faith. It doesn't matter how, how you rank yourself against other people, which is, which is something that we don't really need to do. We can certainly look up to people, but we don't need to say, well, this person is better than, than me in faith. And those, those kinds of thoughts can be very damaging. Instead, what we can say is, is that we can say, God, I just want to be faithful within myself. And whatever that looks like, whatever that means, I want to do it. And when we do that, we decide that... Uh, we, did, we decide to, to start on this trail, even if we don't have it all figured out, even if we're not perfect, because we're not going to be perfect, we still start on that, on that trail to following God and doing the things he would have us do. So for this week, I think the challenge for today, and I want to encourage you in this, is, is very simple. Right now, because of the situation that we're in with COVID-19, we have an opportunity And it may not seem like that. This may not seem like an opportunity at all. But in a way, it is. It's an opportunity to reach out to people who may be hurting. It's an opportunity to reach out to people who may want to know more about Jesus, or maybe looking looking for something in general. And and they feel like there's a void. There's There's a missing part of their life. And if you know people like that, I would encourage you to reach out to them via social media or texting or a phone call and say, hey, uh, we are doing our online services for Easter Sunday. We would love to have you just watch our our online services there at 9.30 and 11 this coming Sunday. And we also have Good Friday services at 7. And just kind of invite them to watch it online. It's a very simple thing to do. It's even easier than inviting somebody to church, which can often be intimidating. And out of that, you can pray that God will use that connection 
to bring somebody into a closer relationship with him. And so I just want to encourage you guys to do that because even in our, even in our imperfection, even in the ways that we, that we, don't, we don't make it, make it up to the mark the way we should, um, we have chances and opportunities to do the things that Jesus would have us do to serve him. And Peter didn't wait until he was perfect. Uh, if we did that, no one would do anything. Um, and I encourage all of us to look at it the same way. As we work through our baggage, as we work through our, our situations that are, are less than perfect, God can still use us. So allow him to use you this week as you interact with people, as you talk with people. Um, invite them to church, invite them to these devotions. Um, if they have questions for the pastors, they're available. Uh, and interact with people online and encourage them in their faith in, in any way you can. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.